Hi, and welcome to our Samba Bonanza Samba Workshop. I'm Pete. I'm John from Jawsuit Music Service. And we're going to have lots of fun playing lots of games, singing a Samba song, and playing some crazy Samba pieces of music. We hope you enjoy it as much as we do. So, as a little warm up, we're just going to play a little marching game where we're going to march and we're going to get used to counting because in samba we have to do lots of saying and playing at the same time. So, we're going to simply start with a little march on the spot, just like so. Once you get good at this, we can then start saying one and two, one and two, and one. This is good. One and two and one Now let's make it a bit harder. Let's put in a clap on the end. One and two and 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 one and two. This is awesome, Pete. Do you know what? I know a little song that we could do as we're doing the singing and the dancing and the clapping. How about that? Superb. Sounds good. Okay, so we're going to sing our Samba song now, and hopefully this will get you in the mood for our amazing Samba experience later on. I'm going to sing a phrase, and you lot and Pete are going to sing back to me. And all the time we're going to try and keep this marching going. So first of all, let's get this march going. Here we go. One and two and one and two and one. Ready to sing, Pete? I'm ready. Okay, so remember, I go first, you're going to copy back. I like samba. I like samba. Carnival samba. Carnival samba. We like to samba. We like to samba. Escolade samba. Escolade samba. Ah, now, hang on. I should explain at this point that in Brazil, they don't call it samba club. They don't call it samba school. They use their own language, of course. And they say Escola de samba. For Samba Club. So, we're going to use those words, okay? We're Brazilian. Here we go. From the beginning, one more time. One and two and one and two and one and two. I like Samba. I like Samba. Carnival Samba. Carnival Samba. We like to Samba. We like to Samba. Escola de Samba. Escola de Samba. Drumming samba, drumming samba, drumming samba, drumming samba. Hey! Hey! Very good. Give yourselves a big round of applause. Very well done. So some great singing there. Brilliant. Before we get to playing our instruments, uh, we're going to think a little bit about rhythm. Um, and focus on rhythm so that we're ready to play this samba groove later on. We're going to play one of my favourite games now. This is called Don't Clap This One Back. So I'm going to clap lots of patterns. Pete is going to copy back those patterns to me, all apart from one pattern. When he hears this pattern, he's going to stay completely still. He's not going to do anything. He's not going to smile, move, blink, breathe, anything, hopefully. To help you at home, if you want to play along, think of these words. Don't clap this one back. So when you hear that rhythm, don't clap back. Do nothing. Stand perfectly still. If you get it right, say to your mum and dad, I've got it right. I need a biscuit. Okay? So we're going to play Don't Clap This One Back. Let's see if we can catch Pete out first time. Very good, Pete. Shall we try that Too one good. more time? One more time, perhaps a little bit faster. See if we can catch Pete out this time. Here we go. Remember, I clap first, you lot on Pete, clap back. Apart from that special rhythm.
Oh, very good, Pete. He's been practicing. Don't catch me out. Okay, so this is our first instrument. This is our big surdo drum. The surdo drum is the biggest instrument in our samba collection and is often used as a heartbeat within a rhythm. Now, because they often will be marching at the same time as playing, you'll see that my surdo drum is attached using a strap. When we play the surdo drum, we're simply going to be striking it in the middle on the top and it sounds something like this. Now, of course, you might not have a surdo at home, so John's going to briefly talk to you about an alternative that you might have at home instead. Brilliant. Thank you, Pete. So, uh, in my house, we have plenty of these. Buckets. Um, you could also use some of those big tubs you find for the garden. Uh, anything with a big surface area that you can strike. Uh, I've got an old, small hammer here, and I'm going to use the wrong end to strike the surface. But if you've got some wooden spoons at home, or perhaps even a ladle, that will do just as well. Uh, I'm going to put the bucket just between my legs like this. I'm going to play with the wrong end of the stick and it's going to sound like this. The next instrument is our Rapuniki. Rapuniki is my particular favourite instrument. It's often used for call and response, which you might discuss a little bit later. So the Rapuniki again is quite often used with a strap, again because the drummers are marching. In this case I'm just going to be standing still and playing. We're going to just use one or two sticks to strike the top of our Rapuniki and play patterns like this. That's our Rapuniki. Now obviously at home you might not have a Rapuniki, so again John's going to briefly talk to you about an alternative instrument. Brilliant, so uh, I've got an idea for something we can use as a repaniki. I brought in this morning, very early, uh, a box of sweets and Pete's been... Hang on. Pete, this was a full box of... Just a few. Anyway, I've got a plastic box that was full of sweets but is now empty. I've also got a wooden spoon that we mentioned earlier. Uh, and if I play on the bottom side of the box with the wooden spoon we can replicate that repaniki sound. Our next instrument is the kaisha drum. The kaisha drum is like the samba equivalent of a snare drum. Now if you have a snare drum at home off a drum kit or anything you could use that, that would be absolutely fine. The snare drum, or the kaisha drum, as you can see, has got these snares going across the top. And that's to try and create a buzzy kind of sound. We would strike the drum on the top, obviously not on the snares, but either side of them. And it gives us a buzzy sound that sounds a bit like this. Now, if you don't have a kaisha or a snare drum at home or at school, again, John's going to briefly give us a demonstration of an alternative instrument. Brilliant, thank you Pete. So uh, I'm going to take the sweet box from earlier on. I'm going to put in that sweet box, I've got three of these dangly key rings. Brilliant. I've also got a couple of metal washers. Have an experiment at home. Anything really that's going to make that jangly metallic sound. I'm going to put the lid back on. There we go. And I've got my faithful old wooden spoon. And now when we hit this drum, we should get just a slight jangling or metallic sound like the snares on Pete's Kaisha. Okay, our next instrument is a tambourine. A bit like a tambourine, but without the bells around the outside, so you can't shake this one. So the tambourine is small, but is one of the most important instruments in samba. To play the tambourine, if you have a traditional one, we must hold it in the correct way. So we must put our fingers inside the drum and our thumb just goes on the rim. We must then hold it up like it is a mirror. Now a good way to remember if you've got it in the right place is to think about something that John and I did not need to do this morning. And that is to look in a mirror and check out our hair. Okay, so we must hold it up here. 
Okay. So to strike the drum, we use a plastic stick. We strike it in the middle. You'll notice that I'm just angling the drum down a little bit, and that's so that the tip of the stick can strike in the middle. And it should sound something like this. Now, of course, if you don't have a tambourine at home, John's going to tell us a little bit about an alternative instrument. Brilliant. Thank you, Pete. So uh, for this instrument, the tambourine, I'm going to use a plastic picnic plate. Uh, and to replicate the special stick that's used to play the tambourine, I've gone out into the garden and I've found four twigs and I've secured them about halfway down with an elastic band, okay, which kind of spreads out the sound slightly. Uh, so I'm going to play my plastic plate with my twigs held together and this should be just like the tambourine that Pete had there. Now, of course, at home, you might not have a hard plastic plate. If you haven't, then you can use the top of your sweet box that you were using earlier on. Please don't use your mum or your dad's best china. The next instrument we have are the agogo bells. Quite often people get confused with a cowbell, but no, these are agogo bells because there are more than one bell. You'll see here that I have two. Now to play the agogo bells, a lot of people hold it like this. This is not the correct way. The best way to hold your agogo bells is to put your hand out like you're asking somebody for some extra pocket money or some sweets. We then lay the agogo bells on top of our hand like so. The most important thing is that the opening of the agogo bell is facing away from you. We don't want to hold it this way. It doesn't matter whether the big bell is this side or this side. It is entirely up to you. We would then use a normal drumstick. If you're using a normal drumstick, I would recommend that you don't hold it at the bottom. Instead, you just hold it halfway up. It just gives you better control. We then just strike the stick on top of the agogo bells. You'll notice that I've angled them slightly just so that I can move from one bell to another to create a different sound. And they should sound something like this. Now, of course, if you don't have a set of agogo bells at home, instead, John's going to talk to you briefly about an alternative instrument. Brilliant. Thanks, Pete. So uh, I'm going to be using the wooden spoon that we've used a few times already today. Uh, also, I've got one of our saucepans uh, from home uh, or a milk pan, so slightly smaller than a normal saucepan. Uh, I'm going to play the side of the saucepan and the bottom of the saucepan, and that should hopefully give us two slightly different sounds, a bit like the agogo bell which had a slightly higher sound and a slightly lower sound, we should have two different sounds as well. Let's see how it sounds. Our last instrument is this instrument here, which in England we would call it a shaker, but in Brazil they call it the ganza. Now, the ganza looks quite easy to play, but there is a bit of thought and a bit of coordination that is required to play this instrument. So to start off with, we need to hold it in the correct way, and that is by placing one hand on each end. You then have a choice to make. You can move it backwards and forwards, or you can move it up and down. Now there is a slight difference, so here's a quick game to see if you can hear the difference. I'm going to move it backwards and forwards, and I'm going to move it up and down. What was the difference in the sound? I do it one more time, forwards and backwards, and now up and down. Did you hear the difference? Of course, moving it up and down will make the sound a little bit louder. So if you want to play quietly, we can go forwards and backwards. And if you want to play loud, we can go up and down. Or you can do a little bit of both. That's the Ganza. Now, if you don't have a Ganza at home, these are really easy to replicate using different stuff at home. So John's going to briefly talk to you about how you can make your own Ganza. Brilliant. Thank you. So uh, this morning, very early, I brought in a tube of crisps uh, that I've left somewhere around. Oh, look, here it is, just down here. Uh, I need to empty. Hang on. There are no crisps in here, Pete. Sorry again, John. Got a bit hungry at lunch. OK, well, Pete has thankfully 
emptied out all the crisp for me uh, and replaced it with dried rice. You can also use pasta or dried beans. Have an experiment at home, see what sound you like the best. So we've got our uh, crisp tube filled about a quarter full with dried rice. Uh, then we've sellotaped the end on to make sure that it doesn't leap off and spray the living room with rice. Uh, we're going to hold both ends, just going to spread the rice out a bit in the tube. Uh, and like Pete said, we can play it quietly with a to and fro motion. Very nice. Or we can do that short, sharp sound by moving the tube up and down. And that's our homemade version of the Ganza. Okay, so now that we've discussed all the instruments, we're going to talk you through and teach you how to play some samba patterns on each of those instruments. So we're going to start with our surdo to begin with. Now, with our surdos, we need to use the counting that we did with our marching. So if you remember, the marching pattern went one and two and one and two and. And we're just going to strike the drum on the number one and the number two. So it literally look and sounds something like this. One and two go. One and two and 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 stop. Super. After you got used to that, if you're at home and you think oh, I want a bit more of a challenge, we could start using our hand as well because in samba music, quite often the surdo drummer will use the stick. And their hand to play. So this time we're going to make it a little bit harder. The stick is still going to strike on number one and number two, but the hand will dampen the drum on the and. The counting is exactly the same, and my advice is to never stop counting. Here we go, after two. One and two, go. One. My advice when doing that with your hand is to make sure that your hands don't go too high. If you play with your stick and your hand up here, the chances are you're going to be a little bit late or a little bit early on the beat. Now, of course, if there are two people at home with you when you're trying this out, you could split the part up. So one person only plays on the beat number one and one person plays on beat number two. So John and I are now going to just demonstrate this. I'm going to be beat number one. John's going to be beat number two. We're still going to dampen on the end. So it goes something like this. One and two, go. One and two, one and two. Superb. You get the idea. Have a little time to practice that and then we'll see you for our next instrument. Okay, our next instrument, remember, was our repaniki. So we're now going to learn a pattern for the repaniki. Before we play it, though, we're going to get used to saying the phrase. And again, we're going to be doing that marching exercise to try and keep us playing and thinking about a pulse, which is very important when we play in music. So if we get the marching going first, the pattern for this one is going to be, can I have a biscuit? 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 And whilst we've said that, we're now going to transfer that onto the drum. So it's exactly the same thing. We just say and play. Golden rule in samba is always to say whilst we are playing. Okay? It's going to get a little bit confusing later, so let's get used to doing that right now, and then everything later will be nice and easy. Okay? So here comes the pulse. And after two, we're going to say and play our instruments. After two, one and two, go. Can I have a biscuit? 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 Stop. Superb. You're getting very good at this. So our next pattern is for our kaisha drum. Remember, the kaisha is like the snare drum. Now, the pattern for this drum is going to be 
wet fish cold chicken. So we're going to just say it for a few times with that pulsing mark. So here comes the marching pulse. And after two, we're going to say wet fish cold chicken. After two. One and two, go. Wet fish cold chicken. Wet fish cold chicken. Wet fish cold chicken. Wet fish cold chicken. Super. So we now translate that and put it onto the drum. Again, using our normal drumstick, we're going to... I would just strike it on one side. Don't try and play one bit on here and one bit over here. Just play it all on one side. So we're going to start the marching pulse again. We're going to start saying it and playing it at the same time. Okay, remember the golden rule. Must keep saying it as you're playing it. Here we go. Here's the pulse. After two. One and two, go. Super. Now, if you are finding that easy and you want a new challenge, the next thing would be to, a bit like the Cerdo drum, we're going to use our hand to dampen the drum. And this time, we're going to still use the same phrase, wet fish, cold chicken, but the hand is going to play on wet and cold. So slow motion, it would go wet fish, cold chicken, wet fish, cold chicken, wet fish, cold chicken. The pattern that we're going to be using later is a samba reggae piece and that needs a little bit of what we call offbeat and this pattern is going to create that offbeat pattern. It is a bit tricky but if you say and play it you will be able to keep up with us in just a second. Brilliant Pete, you know what for me that's a bit tricky that rhythm so I might just stick to the one we did originally and play all of wet fish coal chicken I'm not going to bother with the dampening. You do that. I'll do the original rhythm. Excellent. Okay, so watch me if you want to go for the technical bit. If you want the easier option, just keep watching John. Okay, so here we go. Here comes the pulse. And we're going to start playing after two. One and two, go. Wet fish cold. Excellent. If you managed to keep up with me with the technical bit, well done. If you had to go to the easier option, that's cool as well. So here's our tambourine pattern that we're going to play. We're going to say it first like we did with all the other ones. It is a little bit tricky because there is a breathing point in a couple of places. So here comes the pulse. After two, I will say it. And when you feel ready, you join in saying it just with me. After two. One and two, say yes, yes, we are the best. 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 Yes, yes, are the best. Stop. Superb. So we've got the phrase. Now we're going to just transfer that onto the instrument. So again, I'll just demonstrate just once. It would be yes, yes. We are the best, with that breathing point at the end. Here we go, here is the whole pattern with the pulse after two. One and two, go. Yes, yes, we are the best. 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 Stop. Excellent. So, now we move on to the Agogo Bell pattern. So, the Agogo Bell pattern is simply going to be John and my favourite food, which has been repeated over and over again for this summer weather. So, we start the pattern off, we start the march off, and the pattern is simply going to be ice cream, 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 ice cream. Stop. Superb. Now, when we transfer that onto our go-go bells, we often start with the high pitch first. So I'm going to start on my smaller bell, okay? And we have ice cream on the small bell before moving over and playing an ice cream on the lower bell. 
and then we go back to the high and just keep repeating from small belt to big belt okay this one's a little bit tricky because this one does get a little bit faster sometimes if you're not really careful so again the idea of saying and playing ice cream ice cream will hopefully stop anyone from getting faster let's give it a go here comes the, the pulse after two one and two play ice cream 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 Superb. And you, I don't think you got faster, so that's cool. And our last instrument and our last phrase is for the Ganza. Now, the Ganza is just simply the word caterpillar repeated over and over again. So we're going to just practice saying it first with that pulse again. Here comes the march. After two. One and two, go. Caterpillar, 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 stop. So, said excellently, so now we're going to say and play. Remember the secret of still saying as we play all the time. Here we go, here comes the pulse, after two. One and two. Excellent. Brilliant. So we've learned all the patterns on our different instruments. Maybe you've got the real instruments. Maybe you've got your homemade instruments. My suggestion now is press pause on your computer or your tablet and just take two minutes to run through your pattern a few times, make sure it's in your head. Then when you're ready, you've got your instrument ready, you've got your pattern in your head, press play, and we'll have all the instruments going at the same time, and you can take part in this fantastic samba groove. Brilliant, so we're almost ready to play our samba groove now. Uh, but in samba, you never just start. And you've got to know when to finish. So the most important instrument is, in fact, the samba whistle that you can see Pete is wearing now. Uh, so for the beginning, Pete is going to give us four good blasts on the samba whistle. He's not going to count one and two and anymore. Four blasts on the samba whistle. Then we're going to play our samba groove. We're going to keep going. We've got about a minute's worth of music for you to join in with. And then to finish, so we all finish at the same time together. Pete is going to give us four big blasts on the whistle again, and we're going to add an extra beat on the end. So, Pete, could we demonstrate now the beginning? Perhaps if I play on my saucepan, you give me the four blasts, okay. and we're going to start. Ready? Yep. Excellent. Uh, let's just demonstrate the ending, if that's okay, Pete. Okay. So, I'll be playing along. Pete will give me those four blasts, I'll be listening, so I hear those, and when I've hear, heard those four blasts, I'm going to add a final hit at the end, so we know we're all finished. Okay, so I'm playing, Pete's going to join in, uh, and we'll do our samba finish together at the same time.
fantastic. We hope you have enjoyed our junk Samba session as much as we have. Uh, why don't you rewind this video uh, and try and play some of the other different patterns. So don't concentrate on one pattern. Try and play some of the other instrument patterns. How about seeing if you can make some of those instruments as well. Once you've done that, why not come up with your own patterns, play the video again, see if they fit with our pattern and enjoy that amazing Samba groove. If you do come up with something amazing, please do let us know. Uh, go onto the Dorset Music Service website or you can check through Google to find out our web address. Uh, I'm John, I'd like to say thank you very much. And I'm Pete, you've been great. We will hopefully see you again in the future.